Act Three of *The Witch of Edmonton* by William Rowley, Thomas Decker, and John Ford. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act the Third, Scene One: The Village Green. Enter Cuddy Banks with the Morris dancers. Nay, Cuddy, pray thee do not leave us now. If we part all this night, we shall not meet before day i prithee banks let us keep together if you were wise a word would serve but as you are i must be forced to tell you again i have a little private business an hour's work it may prove but a half hours as luck may serve and then i take horse and along with you have we e'er a witch in the morris no 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 woman's part but maid marian and the hobby horse i'll have a witch i love a witch faith witches themselves are so common nowadays that the counterfeit will not be regarded they say we have three or four in edmonton besides mother sawyer i would she would dance her part with us so would not i for if she comes the devil and all comes along with her well i'll have a witch i have loved a witch ever since i played at cherry pit leave me and get my horse dressed give him oats but water him not till i come whither do we foot it first to sir arthur clarington's first then whither thou wilt well i am content but we must up to carter's the rich yeoman i must be seen on hobby horse there oh i smell him now i'll lay my ears banks is in love and that's the reason he would walk melancholy by himself Ha. Who was that said I was in love? Nor I. Nor I. Go to. No more of that. When I understand what you speak, I know what you say. Believe that. Well, twas I. I'll not deny it. I meant no hurt. In. I have seen you walk up to Carts of Chesham. Banks, were you not there last Shrove Tide? Yes. I was ten days together there the last Shrove Tide. How could that be? when there are but seven days in a week pretty peace i reckon style a nova as a traveller thou understandest as a freshwater farmer that never saw a week beyond sea ask any soldier that ever received his pay but in the low countries and he'll tell thee there are eight days in the week there hard by how dost thou think they rise in high germany italy and those remoter places Aye but simply there are but seven days in the week yet no simply as thou understandest prithee look but in the lover's almanac when he has been but three days absent oh says he i have not seen my love these seven years there's a long cut when he comes to her again and embraces her oh says he now methinks i am in heaven and that's a pretty step he that can get up to heaven in ten days need not repent his journey you may ride a hundred days in carosh and be further off than when you set forth but i pray you good morris mates now leave me i'll be with you by midnight well since he will be alone we'll be back again and trouble him no more but remember banks the hobby horse shall be remembered but hark you get pole davis the barber's boy for the witch because he can show his art better than another exudes all but cuddy well now to my walk i am near the place where i should meet i know not what say i meet a thief i must follow him if to the gallows say i meet a horse or a hare or a hound still i must follow some slow-paced beast i hope yet lovers full of lightness in the heaviest lovers ha my guide has come enter the dog a water dog i am thy first man sculler i go with thee ply no other but myself away with the boat land be but at catherine's dock my sweet catherine's dock and i'll be a fair to thee that way nay which way thou wilt 
Thou knowest the way better than I. Fine gentle cur it is, and well brought up, I warrant him. We go a ducking, spaniel. Thou shalt fetch me the ducks, pretty kind rascal. Enter a spirit visited. He throws off his mask, etc., and appears in the shape of Catherine. Thus throw I off my own essential horror, and take the shape of a sweet lovely maid, whom this fool dotes on. We can meet his folly, but from his virtues must be runaways. We'll sport with him, but when he reckon and call, we know where to receive, the which pays for all. The dog barks. Ow, ow, ow. Aye, is that the watchword? She's come. Sees the spirit. Well, if ever we be married, it shall be a barking church in memory of thee. Now, come behind, kind cur. And have I met thee, sweet Kate? I will teach thee to walk so late. Oh, see, we meet in meter. The spirit retires as he advances. What? Dost thou trip from me? Oh, that I were upon my hobby horse, I would mount thee so nimble. Stay, nymph, stay, nymph, seemed Apollo. Tarry and kiss me, sweet nymph, stay. Tarry and kiss me, sweet. We will to Chesham Street, and then to the house stands in the highway. Nay, by your leave, I must embrace you. Exit, following the spirit. Within. Oh, help, help. I am drowned. I am drowned. Re-enter Cuddy, wet. <laughs> that was an ill night to go a-wooing in. I find it now in Pond's almanac. Thinking to land at Catherine's dock, I was almost at grave's end. I'll never go to a wench in the dog days again. Yet, tis cool enough. Had you never a poor in this dog trick? A mange take that black hide of yours. I'll throw you in at Limehouse in some tanner's pit or other. <laughs> How now? Who's that laughs at me? Hiss to him? The dog barks. Peace, peace. Thou didst this, but thy kind neither. Twas my own fault. Take heed how thou trustest the devil another time. How now? Who's that speaks? I hope you have not your reading tongue about you. Yes, I can speak. The devil you can. You have read Aesop's fables, then. I've played one of your parts, then. The dog that catched at the shadow in the water. Pray you, let me catechise you a little. What might one call your name, dog? My dame calls me tom tis well and she may call me ass so there's a whole one betwixt us tom ass she said i should follow you indeed well tom give me thy fist we are friends you shall be mine ingle i love you but i pray you let's have no more of these ducking devices not if you love me Dogs love where they are beloved. Cherish me, and I'll do anything for thee. Well, you shall have jowls and livers. I have butchers to my friends that shall be stowem, and I will keep crusts and bones for you, if you'll be a kind dog, Tom. Anything. I'll help thee to thy love. Wilt thou? That promise shall cost me a brown loaf though I steal it out of my father's cupboard. You'll eat stolen goods, Tom, would you not? Oh, best of all, the sweetest bits, those. You shall not starve, Ningle Tom. Believe that. If you love fish, I'll help you to maids and souls. I'm acquainted with a fishmonger. Maids and souls? Oh, sweet bits, banqueting stuff, those. One thing I would request you, Ningle, as you have played the knavish cur with me a little, that you would mingle amongst our Morris dancers in the morning. You can dance, 
yes yes anything i'll be there but unseen to any but thyself get thee gone before fear not my presence i have work to-night i serve more masters more dames than one he can serve mammon and the devil too it shall concern thee and thy love's purchase there is a gallant rival loves the maid and likely is to have her mark what a mischief before the morris ends shall light on him oh sweet ningle thy noof once again friends must part for a time farewell with this remembrance shalt have bread too when we meet again if ever there were an honest devil twill be the devil of edmonton i see farewell tom i prithee dog me as soon as thou canst exit i'll not miss thee and be merry with thee those that are joys denied must take delight in sins and mischiefs tis the devil's right exit scene two the neighbourhood of edmonton enter frank thorny and winifred in boys clothes prithee no more those tears give nourishment to weeds and briars in me which shortly will all grow and top my head my shame will sit and cover all that can be seen of me i have not shown this cheek in company pardon me now thus singled with yourself it calls a thousand sorrows round about some going before and some on either side but infinite behind all chained together your second adulterous marriage leads that is the sad eclipse the effects must follow as plagues of shame spite scorn and obloquy why hast thou not left one hour's patience to add to all the rest one hour bears us beyond the reach of all these enemies are we not now set forward in the flight provided with the dowry of my sin to keep us in some other nation while we together are we are at home in any place tis foul ill-gotten coin far worse than usury or extortion let my father then make the restitution who forced me to take the bribe it is his gift and patrimony to me so i receive it he would not bless nor look a father on me until i satisfied his angry will when i was sold i sold myself again some knaves have done it in lands and i in body for money and i have the hire but sweet no more tis hazard of discovery our discourse and then prevention takes off all our hopes for only but to take her leave of me my wife is coming who coming your wife no no thou art here the woman i knew not how to call her now but after this day she shall be quite forgot and have no name in my remembrance oh, see see she's come enter susan go lead the horses to the hill's top there i'll meet thee nay with your favour let him stay a little i would part with him too because he is your sole companion and i'll begin with him reserving you the last i with all my heart you may hear if it please you sir no tis not fit some rudiments i conceive they must be to overlook my slippery footings and so no indeed sir tush i know it must be so and tis necessary on but be brief walks forward what charge so ere you lay upon me mistress i shall support it faithfully being honest to my best strength belief shall be no other i know you were commanded to my husband by a noble knight o oh, gods o oh, mine eyes how now what ails thou lad uh, something hit mine eye it makes it water still even as you said commended to my husband some door i think it was i was forsooth commended to him by sir arthur clarington whose servant once my thorny was himself that title methinks should make you almost fellows or at the least much more than a servant and i am sure he will respect you so your love to him then needs no spur from me and what for my sake you will ever do tis fit it should be bought with something more than fair entreats look here's a jewel for thee a pretty wanton label for thine ear and i would have it hang there still to whisper these words to thee thou hast my jewel with thee it is but earnest of a larger bounty when thou returnst with praises of thy service which i am confident thou wilt deserve why thou art many now besides thyself thou mayst be servant friend and wife to him a good wife is them all 
A friend can play the wife and servant's part, And shift enough. No less the servant can the friend and wife. 'Tis all but sweet society, good counsel, Interchanged loves, yes, and counsel keeping. MASTER. Not done yet. ABIGAIL. Even now, sir? MARION. Mistress, believe my vow. Your severe eye, were it present to command, Your bounteous hand, were it then by to buy or bribe my service, Shall not make me more dear or near unto him Than I shall voluntary. I'll be all your charge, Servant, friend, wife to him. MARION. Wilt thou? Now blessings go with thee for it. Courtesies shall meet thee coming home. Pray you say plainly, Mistress, are you jealous of him? If you be, I'll look to him that way too. Sayst thou so? I would thou hadst the woman's bosom now. We have weak thoughts within us. Alas, there's nothing so strong in us as suspicion. But I dare not, nay, I will not think so hardly of my thorny. Believe it, mistress, I'll be no pander to him, and if I find any loose lubric scapes in him, I'll watch him, and at my return protest I'll show you all. He shall hardly offend without my knowledge. Thine own diligence is that I press, and not the curious eye over his faults. Farewell. If I should never see thee more, take it forever. Prithee, take that along with thee. Handing his sword to Winifred. And haste thee to the hill's top. I'll be there instantly. No haste, I prithee, slowly as thou canst. Exit Winifred. Pray, let him obey me now. Tis happily his last service to me. My power is even a going out of sight. Why would you delay? We have no other business now but to part. And will not that, sweetheart, ask a long time? Methinks it is the hardest piece of work that ever I took in hand. Fie, fie, why look? I'll make it plain and easy to you. Farewell. Kisses her. Alas, I'm not half perfect in it yet. I must have it read over an hundred times. Pray you take some pains. I confess my dullness. Aside. What a thorn this rose grows on. Parting was sweet, but what a trouble twill be to obtain it. Come, again and again. Farewell. Kisses her. Yet wilt return? All questions of my journey, my stay, employment, and revisitation, fully I have answered all. There's nothing now behind but nothing. And that nothing is more hard than anything, than all the everythings. This request... What is it? That I may bring you through one pasture more, up to yon knot of trees. Amongst those shadows I will vanish from you. They shall teach me how. <sighs> Why, it is granted. Come, walk then. Nay, not too fast. They say slow things have best perfection. The gentle shower wets to fertility. The churlish storm may mischief with his bounty. The baser beasts take strength even from the womb. But the Lord Lion's whelp is feeble long. Exit. Scene three. A field with a clump of trees. Enter the dog. Now for an early mischief and a sudden. The mind's about it now. One touch from me soon sets the body forward. Enter Frank and Susan. Your request is out. Yet will you leave me. What, so churlishly? You'll make me stay forever rather than part with such a sound from you. Why, you almost anger me. Pray you be gone. You have no company, and tis very early. Some hurt may betide you homewards. Tush, I fear none. To leave you is the greatest hurt I can suffer. Besides, I expect your father and mine own to meet me back, or overtake me with you. They began to stir when I came after you. I know they will not be long. So I shall have more trouble. The dog rubs against him. Thank you for that. Aside. Then I'll ease all at once. It is done now. What I ne'er thought on. You shall not go back. Why shall I go along with thee, sweet music? No, to a better place. Any place I. I'm there at home, where thou pleasest to have me. At home? I'll leave you in your last lodging. I must kill you. Oh, fine. You'd fright me from you. You see, I had no purpose. I'm unarmed. "'Tis this minute's decree, and it must be. "'Look, this will serve your turn.' "'Draws a knife. "'I'll not turn from it, if you be earnest, sir. "'Yet you may tell me wherefore you will kill me.' "'Because you are a whore.' 
there's one deep wound already. A whore! 'Twas ever further from me than the thought of this black hour. A whore! Yes, I'll prove it, and you shall confess it. You are my whore, no wife of mine. The word admits no second. I was before wedded to another. Have her still. I do not lay the sin unto your charge. It is all mine own. Your marriage was my theft, for I espoused your dowry, and I have it. I did not purpose to have added murder. The devil did not prompt me till this minute. You might have safe returned. Now you cannot. You have dogged your own death. Stabs her. And I deserve it. I'm glad my fate was so intelligent. Twas some good spirit's motion. Die? Oh, twas time. How many years might I have slept in sin? The sin of my most hatred, too. Adultery. Nay, sure, twas likely that the most was past, for I meant never to return to you after this parting. Why, then, I thank you more. You have done lovingly, leaving yourself, that you would thus bestow me on another. Thou art my husband, Death, and I embrace thee, with all the love I have. Forget the stain of my unwitting sin. And then I come, a crystal virgin to thee. My soul's purity shall with bold wings ascend the doors of mercy, for innocence is ever her companion. Not yet, mortal. I would not linger you, or leave you a tongue to blab. Stabs her again. Now heaven reward you, never the worse for me. I did not think that death had been so sweet, nor I so apt to love him. I could never die better had I stayed forty years for preparation. For I'm in charity with all the world. Let me for once be thine example, heaven. Do to this man as I him free forgive, and may he better die and better live. Oh. Dies. Tis done, and I am in. Once past our height, we scorn the deep's abyss. This follows now to heal her wounds by dressing of the weapon. Oh! Arms, thighs, oh! hands, oh! any place. We must not fail. Wounds himself. Oh! Light scratches giving such deep ones. The best I can to bind myself to this tree. Now's the storm which, if blown o'er, many fair days may follow. Binds himself to a tree. The dog ties him behind and exits. Ah, so. Huh. I'm fast. I did not think I could have done so well behind me. How prosperous and effectual mischief sometimes is. Aloud. Help! Help! Murder! 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 Enter Carter and old Thorny. Ha! Ah, whom tolls the bell for? Oh! Oh! Oh, me! The cause appears too soon. My child! My son! Susan, girl, child, not speak to thy father? Ha! Ah. Oh, lend me some assistance to o'ertake this hapless woman. Let's o'ertake the murderers. Speak whilst thou canst, and none may be too late. I fear thou hast death's mark upon thee, too. I know them both, yet such an oath is passed as pulls damnation up if it be broke. I dare not name them. Think what forced men do. Keep oath with murderers? That were a conscience to hold the devil in. Nay, sir, I can describe them shall show em as familiar as their names. The taller of the two at this time wears his satin doublet white but crimson lined, hose of black satin, cloak of scarlet. Warbeck, Warbeck, Warbeck! Do you list to this, sir? Yes, yes, I listen you. There's nothing to be heard. The other's cloak's branched velvet, black, velvet lined his suit. I have em already. Summerton, Summerton! Final revenge all this. Come, sir, the first work is to pursue the murderers, when we have removed these mangled bodies hence. Sir, take that carcass there, and give me this. I will not own her now, 
she's none of mine bob me off with a dumb show no i'll have life this is my son too and while there's life in him tis half mine take you half that silence for it when i speak i look to be spoken to forgetful slut alas what grief may do now look sir i'll take this load of sorrow with me i do and i'll have this exit old thorny with susan in his arms how do you do sir oh very ill sir yes i think so but tis well you can speak yet there's no music but in sound sound it must be i have not wept these twenty years before and that i guess was ere that girl was born yet now methinks if i but knew the way my heart so full i could weep night and day exit with frank scene four before sir arthur clarington's house enter sir arthur clarington warbeck and somerton come gentlemen we must all help to grace the nimble-footed youth of edmonton that are so kind to call us up to-day with an high morris i could wish it for the best if it were the worst now absurdity is in my opinion ever the best dancer in a morris i could rather sleep than see him not well sir faith not ever thus leaden yet i know no cause for it now am i beyond mine own condition highly disposed to mirth well you may have yet a morris to help both to strike you in a dump and make him merry enter sawgut with the morris dancers etc come will you set yourselves in morris ray the four bell second bell tenor and great bell made marion for the same bell but where's the weathercock now the hobby horse is banks come yet what a spite tis when set you forward gentlemen we stay but for the hobby horse sir all our footmen are ready tis marvel your horse should be behind your foot yes sir he goes further about we can come in at the wicket but the broad gate must be opened for him. Enter Cuddy Banks with the hobby horse, followed by the dog. Oh, he stayed for you, sir. Only my horse wanted a shoe, sir. But we shall make you amends ere we part. I well said. Make them drink ere they begin. Enter servants with beer. A bowl, I prithee, and a little for my horse. He'll mount the better. Nay, give me. I must drink to him he'll not pledge else drinks here hobby holds the bowl to the hobby horse i pray you no not drink you see gentlemen we can but bring our horse to the water he may choose whether he'll drink or no drinks again a good moral made plain by history strike up father sorgut strike up in when you will children Cuddy mounts the hobby. Now in the name of the best foot forward. Endeavours to play, but the fiddle gives no sound. How now, not a word in thy guts? I think, children, my instrument has caught cold on the sudden. Aside. My ningle's knavery. Black Tom's doing. Why, what, what mean you, Father Sorgas? Sorgas? Why, what would you have him do? You hear his fiddle is speechless. I lay mine ear to mine instrument that my poor fiddle is bewitched. I played the flowers in May e now, as sweet as a violet, and now twill not go against the hair. You see, I can make no more music than a beetle of a cow turd. Let me see, Father Sorgut. Takes the fiddle. Say what you had a brave hobby horse that you were beholding to. I'll play and dance too. Ningle, away with it. Gives it to the dog, who plays the Morris. Aye, marry, marry, sir. They dance. Enter a constable and officers. Away with jollity. Tis too sad an hour. Sir Arthur Clarington, your own assistance, in the king's name, I charge, for apprehension of these two murderers, Warbeck and Somerton. Ha! Flat murderers! <laughs> this has awakened my melancholy and struck my mirth down flat murderers the accusation's flat against you gentlemen sir you may be satisfied with this shows his warrant i hope you quietly obey my power 
twill make your cause the fairer oh with, with all, all our, our hearts, hearts sir there's my rival taken up for hangman's meat tom told me he was about a piece of villainy mates and morris men you see he is no longer piping no longer dancing this news of murder has slain the morris you that go the footway fare ye well i'm for a gallop come ningle canters off with the hobby horse and the dog strikes his fiddle which sounds as before i nay and my fiddle be come to himself again i care not i think the devil has been abroad amongst us to-day i'll keep thee out of thy fit now if i can exit with the morris dancers these things are full of horror full of pity but if this time be constant to the proof the guilt of both these gentlemen i dare take on mine own danger yet howsoe'er sir your power must be obeyed oh most willingly sir tis a most sweet affliction i could not meet a joy in the best shape with better will come fear not sir nor judge nor evidence can bind him o'er who's freed by conscience mine stands so upright in the middle zone it takes no shadow to it it goes alone exit end of act three